Welcome to What The Math. So back in 2016, uh, looking at the nearest star to us, Proxima Centauri, which is right there in the back, uh, the scientists discovered that there was um, a planet or that orbited around it that was about 1.3 masses of Earth, in other words, about 130% larger than Earth, with relatively similar parameters, similar size, similar everything. And so a lot of excitement has been generated by this news because on top of that, this particular planet is located in what's known as the Goldilocks uh, zone or Goldilocks region or habitable zone of the star. In other words, this is the region where you would think you would expect liquid water to actually form. So there were a few uh, ideas generated, including by myself, where we actually started to create potentially uh, habitable worlds or potentially habitable looking worlds based on these parameters. And one of them was like a water world, sort of looked like this, with basically just the water covering everything. Potentially we could also have an Earth-like world with some water and lots of continents, or maybe completely barren world with no water whatsoever. Now, all of this is speculation right now, but here's the thing. A very recent study discovered that, well, it might be that we are actually not going to find anything habitable on this planet or any other planet orbiting a red dwarf. A red dwarf is a type of a star that's uh, about half the size, half the mass of our own sun. So if I were to place sun next to it, it would be much, much smaller, also much, much cooler and um, uh, producing a lot less energy. But one thing about these stars is that they're also a lot more um, prone to flares, as you can see. They flare up a lot more. They produce a lot of these highly energetic um, explosions. And this often causes a lot of trouble and a lot of problems on, on planets. On top of this, this particular planet is actually about uh, 25 times closer to its star than Earth is to the Sun. In other words, one day here is only like two weeks long. So both of these conditions create a very challenging environment for Proxima b. One of them is that you're very close to the Sun, to the star Proxima Centauri, and you are basically experiencing a lot of highly charged particles that hit your surface. The other thing is that it's very likely, and this is actually um, based on the simulations, it's very likely that you're also going to be tidally locked to the star. In other words, one day equals to one year. And it's always the same side that's facing the star, which doesn't really help us maintain the liquid water on the surface. Unless, of course, there's a lot of water on the dark side here, which is, of course, something that might still give us hope, and we'll talk about this near the end of the video. And the last part here is that it's those highly energized, highly uh, energetic and highly polarized explosions or flares that you'll see in a few seconds because Proxima Centauri releases quite a lot of them quite often. And there is one happening right now in the background. So one of those storms would be enough to basically cause a lot of trouble in Proxima B. What would actually happen over time is that a lot of the uh, positively charged particles are essentially lured away and stripped away from the planet's surface. And so this is things uh, like hydrogen, for example, and um, the, being the lightest element, hydrogen would escape really, really fast. And hydrogen is, of course, one of the particles needed for water. Also, oxygen would be affected by this as well. And even nitrogen, which, of course, is a very big component of our own atmosphere here on Earth. Many of these elements would be stripped within about 10 million years if, if you were to place a planet in this particular region around any red dwarf. And that's bad news, because if I were to actually go into the simulation known as nearest stars, which is located right here, uh, nearest 100 stars, what you would notice is that here's the sun. And the vast majority of stars around us in our neighborhood, so there's Wolf 1061, uh, there's a few other stars here, all of these, every single one of these, as a matter of fact, like 100 of them within about 25 light years away from us are basically red dwarfs. The majority of stars in our galaxy are red dwarfs. 90, close to 90%, actually over 90% of all stars are red dwarfs. And this is a very difficult situation for us because a red dwarf, like this one right here, for example, with a very funny name of S0253-1652, would have its habitable zone 
in a region where you can only have tightly locked planets and in the region where you would basically expect quite a lot of highly highly energetic flares to hit those planets and to basically strip them of any kind of atmosphere and possible water now just for a comparison let's actually go into our own solar system we're gonna just go into the regular solar system and take a look at our sun so there's our sun watch how many flares do you detect now i've run this many times i've run this um, over and over and you and you might sometimes get one or two flares, but they're going to be very, very small and not particularly exciting. And as we know on our planet Earth, when they do happen, it does create a lot of chaos on our planet. As a matter of fact, there's a few cases in history when um, an actual flare disrupted the Earth, um, or specifically the human activities, dramatically. There's actually one called... There was actually one that hit Canada uh, many years ago that basically disrupted almost everything, destroying electrical circuits and so on. And that wasn't even that big of a flare. It was big enough, but it wasn't the biggest. Now, if our planet Earth was a lot closer to the sun, and specifically here we're talking about basically the distance of about 5% of where it currently is, and so essentially right there where Proxima B is, and on top of this, if this was a red dwarf, our Earth would essentially experience a dramatic increase in those flares and it would strip the atmosphere in no time. Although in this case, because we're so close to the sun and because it's an actual sun, um, an orange uh, star, it basically kind of causes our planet to melt. But that's, that's beyond the point. The point here is this. That Proxima Centauri B is located in the habitable zone, but very, very close to Proxima Centauri, which is a red dwarf. Red dwarfs, on average, have a lot of these flares, many, many of them, and they're very energetic, very highly energetic, a lot more energetic than the ones coming from our sun. Our sun, as it happens, is actually a very, very rare star. It's a very mild star. It doesn't actually have these flares very often. There are a lot of stars that have so many that they would strip um, atmosphere from a planet in, like, years, possibly even months. Whereas a, a star like Proxima Centauri would take maybe millions of years, but it would still do it just as well as those other powerful stars. Sun, however, doesn't do that. Our sun is so mild that it would actually keep the atmosphere on the surface of this uh, planet for a very long time. But there's still hope. And the hope is, as I mentioned before, in the dark area around Proxima Centauri b. Or specifically, maybe even the twilight area right here. Now, it's possible that there might be no uh, thick atmosphere or no significant atmosphere on the surface, but it's possible that maybe somehow some of the atmosphere is maintained via some other uh, molecules, particles. Like, for example, maybe there's methane atmosphere. Maybe there is something else similar to um, a moon like Titan that does have a very, very thick hydrocarbon atmosphere on its surface. As a matter of fact, it's thicker than the one on our planet Earth. And if there is atmosphere on uh, Proxima Centauri, and let's actually just give it one right now. Give it, uh, let's say, at an um, atmospheric pressure of one, just similar to the one on Earth, consisting of something like hydrocarbons or something else. We don't really know what it is. If there is a thick atmosphere for it, for it to maintain liquid water, it's close enough to the, uh, to the star that it would actually be able to form liquid water. But it would not be on this side, that's the tidally locked side. It would very likely be on the twilight side or the dark side, where it would possibly just be ice. Now, this of course makes this a very interesting planet to visit, but it still makes this a very cool world to one day come to and explore, because if we actually can see what this planet is like, we can then estimate what the other planets around other uh, billions of or hundreds of billions of red dwarfs are like as well because a vast 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 majority of stars in our galaxy the milky way are like this they're uh not like this sorry they're like this they're red dwarfs very similar to proxima centauri and that's of course unfortunate for us as a species that needs to have um stars like our sun which are actually quite rare. There's only about maybe one or even less, less than 1% of all of the stars in our galaxy that are similar to our sun. The rest are either too big or too small. Well, anyway. So yes, red dwarfs, like Proxima Centauri, make horrible parents. In which case, we might not actually be able to find any kind of habitable planets in Proxima Centauri system. Nevertheless, though, we should explore it and learn everything from it 
uh, that will allow us to find better, suitable worlds in the future. On the other hand, this of course also means that our sun is a very unique star, a very incredible star, essentially one of the few in the universe. And it's very, very actually interesting because we up to now thought that it was quite common for us to find habitable planets in the galaxy or I guess even in the universe, but it turns out that it's not as common as we thought. And anyway, that's all I wanted to mention in this video and hopefully you learned something from it. And hopefully now you know a little bit, a little bit more about uh, Proxima Centauri and about why um, red dwarfs are such bad parents, such bad stars. Anyway, let's go back to Proxima Centauri and let's actually see what would happen if we had Earth in this region as well. Let's actually place Earth in, uh, in an orbit very, very similar to the one that Proxima Centauri has, and let's see if maybe just maybe they'll collide or something. And then what, let's see what happens when they do collide. So there is Earth, a perfectly habitable world where we all live, and here it is coming very, very close to Proxima B. Yeah, nothing's happening so far. Interesting. And here they come. Oh, wow, that was quite a collision. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you still haven't. Come back here tomorrow to learn something else awesome, amazing, and incredible about space, sciences, or maybe even math. And you know what? If you want to support this channel on Patreon, you are absolutely awesome for thinking about it or for doing it. Thank you for, uh, for all of the support you've given me on Patreon. It does help me create better videos and uh, it does uh, allow me to basically focus on these videos more and more every single day. I'll see you guys later. See you tomorrow. And as always... Space out. Bye-bye.